doctor on the scene and the autopsy are all, all saying, saying carbon monoxide. monoxide. This is like no doubts, right? Up to this point, I want you to know, too, it sounds like you're telling me this is a Milwaukee Mafia story. But right now, it just sounds like Fox City's murder remains. And that's story. why it's on both feeds. Jeez. So That's why it's on both feeds. Because this would work for either one. Mm-hmm. About a month goes by. Amy Summers still refuses to believe it's a suicide. She signs papers having her husband exhumed. Tissues were taken from his flesh and his brain and sent to the state crime lab where they would be further analyzed. She testified before a coroner's inquest, I just knew that he would not do this to himself. She thought that there was something suspicious, and she believed that he was making payoffs to unknown parties. Okay. Now it's starting to sound mafia-esque. Yeah. <laughs> the Fond du Lac district attorney told the press, this may lead to something, and again, it may not. <laughs> Which is, like, the most non-statement you can make. <laughs> uh, charges of payoffs allegedly made by Summers were introduced onto the record by a man named Adolf Ritter, who was the president of the Lamartine Creamery. I don't know if that's how you say Lamartine. So people Sounds who live, good. Okay. Sounds good, though. People Sounds. who live there will be like, what's up, how you <laughs> say it? He says, I, I had heard rumors of payoffs, and he goes, and I, in fact, I, I loaned Summers large amounts of money on occasion. So he's like, okay. Ritter testified that he obtained this payoff rumor information from a man who I buy insurance from. That's all he would say at first. When they pressed him, he identified the insurance man as James Fletcher, who was a former president of the Fond du Lac Junior Chamber of Commerce. Fletcher denied that he ever told Ritter that Summers made payoffs. Fletcher admitted that they had a conversation about Summers shortly after his death, but it was just a passing conversation. I don't remember saying anything about payoff. <laughs> the coroner testified at the inquest that his office had positive evidence that Summers died of carbon monoxide poisoning. End of story. So this time, the coroner's inquest heard all this evidence, and the, the jury, the coroner jury, of just random local citizens, has also now decided the death was suicide by carbon monoxide poisoning. poisoning. <laughs> this should be the end of it. A few months later, October 13th, 1962, an ex-convict and former employee of the Full Cream Cheese Company, not identified by the newspaper, so I don't know who it was, Former employee met with Amy Summers and told her the name of the man who allegedly killed her husband. Wow. Amy had alerted the Fond du Lac police in advance of this meeting, and they secretly recorded the man telling her the killer's name. The police later confronted the man, and he told them the same story that he had told Amy Summers, so he did not deny. When the police asked him, he repeated himself. Mm Mm-hmm. Based on this, the district attorney said that the case would be reopened. <laughs> I'm just curious where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> Neither the name of the ex-convict or the alleged killer um, was made public. I don't know who they are. I'm sure it's in a record somewhere, but it's not a record I've seen. So mm-hmm. I do not know. This is October 1962 that this meeting happens. Then there's an election. And there's a new governor elected. His name's John Reynolds. Okay. And John Reynolds comes into office in January 1963. And Governor Reynolds decides that one of his very first speeches, he's going to talk about the dangers of organized crime and how the state should do a better job of fighting it. Okay. Which, you know, good for him. But here's where this goes wrong. (laughs) He says, based on what he's been informed in like the week or two he's been in In office, office. there are three cities in the state plagued by organized crime. Milwaukee, which was pretty obvious. obvious, Yeah. He also named Kenosha because at the time that this happened, this was just after 
the Tony Burnett kidnapping and murder. So this was fresh in everyone's mind. And that is Shallow Grave? That's the Shallow Grave Grave book. Okay, okay. Yep, so this is like that same month, so of course that's going to come up, makes sense. And then Madison, I'm assuming? No. Fond du Lac. Fond du Lac. Lac. (laughs) Fond du Lac. He goes, goes, there's also organized crime in Fond du Lac. And he goes, let me tell you, there's a company there called the Grande Cheese Company. (laughs) And they're built on a history of murder. They have connections to the mafia in Chicago and New York. Following his speech, Grande's president at the time, John DeBella, left Fond du Lac for a while to avoid press inquiries. He did not want to deal with that. And John DeBella, we didn't, when in the last episode that we did on Grande Cheese, he was the one that took it over and had maybe loose mafia ties. Like he has mafia ties, but yeah, he's... After all the violence, then he's kind of made the president. And yeah, he's like good friends with some New York mobsters and things like that. Connecting him to any specific crime is really hard, hard to, to do. do. So, so what I find interesting here is my belief, and I don't know this for a fact, I don't know where the governor was pulling this from, but it's my belief that Governor Reynolds included Fond du Lac in his list because of how outspoken Amy Summers had been. Because every chance she gets, she's going and telling the news and everyone else, being like, this "This was a murder, this was not a suicide. Now, the governor did not mention that in his speech. He mentioned the Grande Cheese murders of the past. But the reason I find this weird is he's making this speech in 1963. Those murders happened in the 1940s. So it's really Really weird weird. that he's going to be like, this company was committing murders 20 years years ago. ago. (laughs) Like, there's no reason to bring that up unless he thinks there's a current problem. Mm -hmm. And I think the only reason he thinks there's a current problem is if he's somehow convinced that this is another one of those murders. That Leroy Summers owns an Italian cheese company. He's maybe making payoffs. His wife says he was murdered. And so, of course, the other Fond du Lac cheese company is somehow connected. He never explicitly says it. That's what I think he's getting at. So is this the connection Between the Milwaukee Mafia, or I guess it wouldn't even be a connection to the Milwaukee Mafia, just organized crime in general. Is this where we get that connection? Is just because this governor believes that that's what it is? is, This is the whole thing. This is the whole thing. Like when you, when you do like the, the mafia research and Grande Cheese comes up and I was, uh, sorry, Grande Cheese, like they're totally legit company now. They're great. They're wonderful. (laughs) Um, but like when this comes up, this will show up every time they're mentioned in the newspapers. This is, by the way, they were suspected in this thing, mm-hmm. and like the FBI, who did not even investigate the Leroy Summers case, like the FBI would be like, "Oh yeah, by the way, they were suspected in this Leroy Summers death." Just from Amy Summers going out and keep insisting on this with nobody backing her up, it keeps getting picked up by the newspaper, the governor, and so forth. And there's Uh, really no shred of evidence whatsoever that Grande Cheese had anything to do with it. Not at all. I mean... Not at all. But it comes up up in the FBI records, the newspaper reports, and stuff like that. So, so yeah, because you asked, at this point, I will be very clear. I don't believe there is 1% of a connection between Louis Ray Summers and the Mafia. I don't believe believe that. Because it was rumored at the time... I mean, for months on end, it was rumored it's worth bringing up and addressing, if for no other reason than to say, no, this is not a thing. Mm-hmm. Because uh, that's, I, I think longtime listeners will, will have picked up on this by now, but a, a good part of organized crime research isn't just finding the connections and the, and the hidden facts and things like that. You know, that's the fun part. That's like when you go and you tell people like, ooh, look what I found this hidden owner in this business like that's the part people are excited about the other big part of it is like finding that all the rumors going around were just ridiculous are, are crap like some of them are true sometimes they pan out rumors rumors have a way of lodging into the public mind 
And it's important to kind of step forward and be like, yeah, where, what is this based on? 